Hello. Uh, this lecture, we're going to talk about procedural guidance miscellaneous. Uh, this is a pretty short um, lecture. I just wanted to go over a few other things that we don't we don't normally do in the um, intensive care unit, but that can be used by uh, ultrasound. So central venous axis and thoracentesis and pleural effusion drainage were discussed in other lectures. Uh, they have been also linked to this module. Please go ahead and go through those uh, axis uh, videos. In this one, we will talk a little bit about pericardiosynthesis and lumbar puncture. Uh, we don't discuss these often. And uh, others like foreign body removals, arthrocentesis, abscess drainage, and paracentesis, all are actually fairly easy. Once you learn how to do uh, some of the other procedures, they're very good extensions, and you can find some good online videos for that um, as a learning tool. So for pericardi pericardiosynthesis, the first thing we ask ourselves is how much fluid is present is the fluid causing hemodynamic compromise? Where is the best location to do the procedure? Now the probe that we normally use is the abdomen probe, uh, but you can also use the cardiac probe for evaluation. Uh, sometimes with the abdomen probe, it's easier to do uh, needle-directed procedures, and so that's why that's kind of recommended with abdomen presets. So please refer to the pleural effusion lecture to have more uh, visual images of uh, pleural effusion and what uh, is important, but essentially, uh, in short, remember if you have right ventricular collapse uh, and or hypotension and an acute fluid um, collection, uh, you may decide to go ahead and do uh, pleural, uh, pericardial effusion drainage. Now there are grades of pericardial effusions, but remember we're not worried so much about the amount and grade, we're more worried if it's causing tamponade or not. So again, Watch the videos where it talks about right ventricular collapse or right atrial inversion, and then we can uh, discuss that. So you c there are two ways that you can uh, go and make these, this procedure. One is uh, subcostal, which is the teaching, uh, what most of the teaching shows. But as you can see in this image, whenever you go subcostal, you normally go through a large portion of the liver before you get to the actual pocket of fluid. So they did a study in Mayo Clinic 2001-2002 that showed that the distance to the fusion is least and maximal 80% of the time in the apical position compared to the sub -xiphoid. So sometimes if you are looking for just acute drainage because the person is in shock or in hypotensive, then doing an apical position uh, uh, small um, catheter may be optimal. Now, if you are to do this, there is hard to find pericardiosynthesis kits in an emergency because it's such a rare procedure. So you may use a 5 French 12 centimeter uh, femoral arterial line kit that has everything in there that you would need to get it. Uh, or you can use a regular central line kit. Although I would suspect that the needle for this is a little bit too large and uh, you you don't need uh, as long of a needle for this. Uh, there is the video on pericardiosynthesis, so you should supplement this lecture with that video to learn more about the procedure. The last few slides are on lumbar puncture. We very rarely do this in the surgical ICUs, but in the emergency medicine and medical IC settings and neuro neurosurgical IC settings, this is actually more common. So the focus questions you have with this is where is the interspinous space and how deep is the interspinous ligament? Um, the probe you can use is the high-frequency linear array probe, although you, in some obese patients you may need to use uh, a regular abdomen probe, but most of the time this high-frequency linear array is, is enough. So as you can see here on the image on the left, what you can do is uh, put your ultrasound probe in uh, transverse axis, and you can actually move it up and down the spine to get a midline of the spine and you can see the, the corresponding ultrasound image where you see a spine and a spine shadow. And then the bottom image, you can go lateral uh, from midline to lateral to try to get in between the, the two spines. So as you can see on the image on the right over here, you see a spine with a spine shadow and a spine with spine shadow, and then you see a supraspinous ligament. You can actually measure this to kind of see how far down you would have to go to get into the space. And at the end, what you end up having is kind of like a little bullseye and you go right there. And especially in patients where you are not able to palpate the uh, spine, this is a very good technique to use. So remember, note the midline and the transverse and longitudinal sections. Note depth to the interspinous ligament. And key is all in setup. So once you have the patient set up and you are uh, obtaining the procedure, uh, do not set the uh, change the patient uh, 
body happiness. Know the trajectory of the ultrasound beam. It's not just always vertical and horizontal coordinates. Uh, the X doesn't always mark the spot, but it's a general location. This is actually the same uh, technique that you would use for when you're identifying uh, for pleural effusion drainage. Once you uh, set up the patient, you should not be moving the patient around uh, to try to um, get a better view, uh, to get a better um, like opening for the procedure, uh, unless you do ultrasound in between patient movement. So I know this was a short lecture, but remember, uh, this, this talked about pericardiosynthesis and lumbar puncture. The central venous axis and the thoracentesis uh, evaluations were discussed in uh, other lectures. Thank you very much.